Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be talking about the Sega Genesis and uh, we're going to be doing a new mod that can really improve the video and audio quality on uh, pretty much every version of the Sega Genesis. Um, so as some of you guys might know, there are actually a lot of internal hardware revisions to the Genesis. So there's, um, you know, the Model 1, the Model 2, and the Model 3, but then if you open up the hood and look inside, there's actually lots of different motherboard versions as well. And people have done a lot of research on these different revisions, and they found that there's quite a bit of variability in terms of the quality of the video and audio on these different boards. It's generally thought that the best quality versions are the oldest ones, so the Model 1s and specifically the oldest motherboard revisions of the Model 1. Um, but that being said, now there are new mods available to improve the video and sound quality um, of pretty much any Sega Genesis, and it's known as the Triple Bypass mod. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take apart the Sega Genesis and we're going to install one of these Triple Bypass mods onto it. And we're going to do some comparisons because I have a few different Model 2s here. So I can take a stock Model 2 and I can compare it to this one and we can see how this mod uh, significantly improves the sound and the video quality. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so we've got the Sega Genesis here and taking it apart is very easy. Um, you just need a Phillips screwdriver and you just take out the four screws in the corner and that lifts off the outer shell. And uh, this is the interior, and uh, to take off the RF shield and the motherboard, all you have to do is just find every single, uh, you know, point where there is a screw and remove it. And that's about it. And so this board is completely out. And uh, I can tell that this is a VA3 motherboard just by reading uh, the information on the silk screen of the, of the logic board. Uh, so that's going to change, you know, which type of installation we're going to do. So... So this is the board, this is the triple bypass board, and the way that it works is you have to install it, um, in most cases on Model 2s, you install it on the bottom of the board. Um, uh, looks like someone's been in here already and done some kind of work to the power, <laughs> power jack. I'll have to make sure and see if that's actually needed or not. Um, but yeah, so, so it normally sits uh, in a Model 2 right here, just underneath the multi-out jack. So we're going to we're going to set it up here and uh the first thing we're going to have to do is remove a whole bunch of components uh basically to separate the RGB and the sound um from its normal path that it takes and then we're going to intercept that and connect it up to the triple bypass board. All right, so we're going to start by removing a couple of components on the upper portion of the board. I'm pretty sure that these components need to be removed because they're part of the sound circuit, and we're basically just disconnecting the sound circuit from its normal path, and we're going to intercept that with the triple bypass board. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just a best guess because there really is very little good information on exactly how to do this mod. You kind of have to piece it together, so I'm kind of just doing my best based on what I could find. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of a couple of surface mount uh, components here. So these are surface mount capacitors. And you just run some solder along both edges and then they just kind of slide off uh, just like so. And there's a third one. I think this is, yep, this is also a capacitor. There we go. Okay, so those guys are gone. And uh, we're next, we're going to be removing these three electrolytic capacitors. And there's enough space under here for me to just heat one leg up with my iron. And I can kind of just pull these guys out. Okay, so uh, we've got a couple more components to remove here in this region near the power switch. And these connect up to a portion of the, um, the triple bypass that it's called uh, YL, CL, and YR and CR, so four different points. So uh, just like before, we've got to get rid of these two electrolytics. And then uh, there are some surface mount parts. There's a ceramic capacitor over here that's got to go. And then these two ceramics also have to go. Okay, so that's the ceramics. Now I'm going to flip the board over 
and I'm gonna do those electrolytics. I've gotta be really careful there. They're actually like kind of prone to uh, lifting up the vias, and I didn't intend to do that, but I did that on the previous video, so or the previous section of the mod, so so do try to be careful. I mean, the good thing is is that nothing is going to be going in this place, and of course, you know, even if the vias are gone, that can be bypassed and patched, but, you know, I really try not to do that, and I'm kind of wishing I hadn't done that. So, lesson learned, just be very careful when pulling these guys out. Okay, there we go. So those guys are out. I was much more careful this time, so everything is fine. And uh, yeah, all the surface mount components are removed as well. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, so I just realized I missed a few details um, that I need to uh, correct. So one is that a component here, a ceramic capacitor at C68 also needs to be removed, and I had uh, overlooked that. And then I also missed the fact that these two surface mount resistors also need to go. So that's R73 and R72. And now I'm also going to need to bridge these components so that I just have a straight connection between these two points and I don't have any other stuff in the way. So I'm going to get a little piece of wire and I'm going to bridge those and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so now those two resistors have been removed and we've got these two points bridged together and we've got all of the ceramic capacitors removed and the electrolytics, so we are basically good to go. Okay, so right now I've got the camera focused on the AV connector over here and um, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is cutting the R, G, and B that come into these three pins over here. So these little vias here they come directly from the other side of the board. And uh, so RGB come out from there and then come to the three pins. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those three lines so that RGB is completely disconnected. You'll also notice I've done some trimming around the board as well. So I clipped a couple of things and this is because the triple bypass is going to fit right here. And so I had to kind of lower the height of some of those other things so that this could fit perfectly. Um, it's still not great, but I think it's going to be good enough so that I can make contact with all of the pins underneath these uh, these nine pins over here. So, so yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do is just cut a trace here, here, and here. All right, so those lines have been cut, at least um, to the best of my ability, and I confirmed that under the microscope just to make sure that RGB are now severed from the board. So the next thing that we're gonna do now is solder in the triple bypass board. Um, as you can see, uh, there are a couple of jumpers located all throughout the board. Um, so you can see there's a couple over here, and then there's a whole slew of them down here. And so basically, in order to figure out how to use those, you actually have to flip the board over. And it actually tells you, depending on which model you have, what jumpers to to bridge. So in my case, it's kind of easy. I have a VA3 here, so all I have to do is bridge uh, the number two jumpers. And so there's one on this side, one on this side, and so I've already taken care of that. And so I think we're all set. Um, so now from here, we're just going to go ahead and start soldering in the board. Okay, so now that the triple bypass board is soldered into place, the next thing that we're going to do is connect up the RGB lines. And so these three little vias right here are RGB. And so we're going to connect up <clears throat> from uh, these three points here to the RGB pads on the triple bypass. And then from there, the RGB is going to be processed through this board and then output on the connector to those um, lines that we had previously severed. So now I'm going to just go ahead and solder those into place.
Okay, so now all of these wires have been soldered in, and these are all the wires for sound, and so you have sound from three possible sources. I think one is Genesis sound, the other is CD or 32X sounds, and then PSG is the Sega Master System. And then you have pads for the left channel and the right channel. So that's what all of this is, and so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to fold this over so that it doesn't get in the way of the cartridge uh, slot over here. And this is going to go on to the other side of the board, and we're going to see um, where all those connections go in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm all done with wiring up all of the points for audio, and um, I'm also going to leave a link in the description with some photos of this, because if you're trying to do this yourself with a VA3, I think it's going to be much easier to look at the photos than to um, necessarily pause the video. But uh, basically we have um, the X left and right up here, We've got the Y left and right over here, and then we've got the C left and right over here. And then this white wire that's up here by itself, that's the PSG sound. So those are all of the seven points. Um, so that gives you all of the audio sources on the Sega Genesis, and then they all get mixed in properly on the triple bypass board. And uh, just to show you the wiring, the way that it works is I have it bending over this chip. And I did use a little dab of hot glue on top of the chip only. And this was just to secure everything in place and just to, you know, minimize the strain on those solder points. Um, because, you know, it's a lot of cables and that just helps to offset the strain. Um, and of course, if one ever needed to, this could easily be removed with just a little bit of alcohol. And so then, yeah, at that point, the cables flip over. And... They come all the way up here to the triple bypass board. So I think we're basically all set now. The last thing I need to do is just make some cutouts into the RF shield for um, both of these cables. So I need to make sure that there's space so that these cables don't get crimped up. So I'm going to take care of that, and then we're going to reassemble everything and test it out and see how the RGB looks. All right, so you can see that I removed a pretty large chunk of the RF shield over here, and that's just to make sure that the... Uh, the cables don't get cut or strained in any way by being squished by the RF shield. So you can see that everything just kind of fits right where it's supposed to at this point. And uh, now the only thing i got to do is just uh, screw everything into place, and then we're going to give it a test and see how this went. Okay, so we're back, and I've reassembled everything, and I put together a little comparison shot so that you can see the difference between this triple bypassed Model 2 and a Model 1. So if you recall from the start of this video, I was mentioning that the Model 1 is considered like the gold standard for the Sega Genesis. It has the best quality RGB, it's got the best quality sound, and so I have <clears throat> plugged in at the same time a Model 1 um, with RGB cables, and then also this Model 2 with the triple bypass. And so right now I'm going to just toggle between the two. Right now we're looking at the triple bypass. You can see everything looks really sharp and clean and crisp. And then if I switch over to the Model 1, you can see that the colors and everything looks exactly the same. In fact, if I didn't tell you which one was which, you can't tell them apart. They look exactly the same. They look phenomenal. And I can tell you that with a standard Model 2, this is not the case. Normally, there's issues with sound or there's issues with uh, video. It depends on the version that you're looking at. Um, but after this modification, you really can't tell the difference between the two of them at all. Uh, so I'm going to just go back to the triple bypass system, and now let's take a listen to the sound. So yeah, you guys can probably hear that everything sounds really good, um, and that's to be expected with the adjustments that have been made. Um, I've also done a quick test of Sega Master System sound and Sega CD and 32X, and all of that is working correctly too. So, so yeah, I think this modification was a success. Um, I definitely recommend it if you've got a Sega Genesis Model 2 or a Model 3, because um, it really makes a huge difference. Alright, so if you guys like this video, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have uh, content like this out every Friday. Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, this, this console is actually going to be available for sale too at my website, which is oneuprestorations.com. So thanks again everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye!